Okay, welcome and hello, my dear friends. Today, I come to you from the lush environs of my backyard, where the grass is green and the fences are wooden. Today, our video is sponsored by Appeals. Make sure you go to appeals.com. They have cutoff stickers, 20% off right now, and also they have an art and design contest going right now. The theme is Our Beautiful Earth. Enter to win. They're on appeals.com. Almost all mediums accepted. First prize, $500. Second place, $300. Third place, $150. Get in there. Put your art in there. You're going to do great. Appeals.com. Now, would I, would I surprise you if I told you that we're going to do some drawing today? But first, we need to go look in the front yard. Alright, so I don't know if these are the spicy kind or some other non-spicy kind of pepper, but it looks extremely picturesque. I will tell you that. Like if you were wanted some kind of art of a pepper to hang in your kitchen and look all picturesque as a pepper, I feel like this would be it. But I feel like it's only right as it was growing in my yard for me to eat it. And hopefully it's not some poisonous potato seed actually like that guy from into the wild and I hopefully don't die in a school bus poor guy all right I don't actually like spicy stuff so wish me luck I don't have any water here or anything except for the, the dew on the grass and these water droplets on my trash cans right here which my camera is on so bon voyage So far it just tastes like a bell pepper. Hmm. Well, it's not spicy at all. In fact, it was quite delicious. It was like a very tasty bell pepper, if you know what I'm talking about. Those bigger, more rotund ones. Um, I was expecting that to be a very dramatic I mean, an exciting segment for the video where I started to sweat and panic and look like I was in a lot of pain and stuff like that, but it turns out it was a nice little tasty pepper. And uh, thank you, Yard, and whoever planted those before I got here. All right, now, let us go draw. Okay, here we are once again doing some framed art. Usually, if you've been around at all, you know that I do you have a tendency and a love of drawing in sketchbooks? There's something really nice about it, about how each drawing is connected to all the other drawings. And if I draw on a sheet of paper, like a loose sheet of paper like this one, it's much easier to give up near the beginning. But if I'm drawing in a sketchbook, you know, if I've got 10 drawings in the first 10 pages of the sketchbook and on the 11th page, uh, at the beginning of the drawing, it doesn't seem to be going well. That that little mistake or the, the discouraging lines there on the paper are, th those lines are bound to the other 10 drawings I've invested in, right? So it's, I, I, I'm much more motivated to not scribble them out or tear out the page or something, much more motivated to figure out how to make it work. And usually... It does work. Usually I can figure it out if you just power through, keep going. I mean, that doesn't work for everyone's type of drawing, but the type of, you know, kind of abstract, formless, non-representational non type of drawing I, I often do, it works pretty well. It just, the fact that it's in a sketchbook often gives me that little boost of motivation that I need sometimes. But there are benefits for drawing in a piece of paper too, like that you can frame it, which is fun because then you can hang it on the wall or... Uh, it's easier to sell, and uh, I will put this one on my website. I don't sell a lot of my art, partly because it is in a sketchbook. Usually I just resort to doing things like um, selling little books full of them on, like self-published books, you know, uh, 
which I need to make another one of those soon. Um, I, I have like this in design file going with a bunch of books. I just need really the most annoying part of it is sitting there and scanning a bunch of drawings in. I just need to have a scanning day sometime soon so I can scan a bunch of stuff in. Cause it, it, here's the annoying part. You got to scan it in and then you got to edit it. And then I, you know, cause I, I tweak it with Photoshop because when you scan in a drawing, usually at least the way I do, it, I don't know, maybe I'm doing it wrong. It, it's like not quite right. You got to import the scan into Photoshop adjust the levels so the lines are a little bit darker to uh, so they look like real life like dark ink lines and then like touch it up a little bit so I save it I save each one in two different sizes like a really big size a really small size for if I want to put it somewhere I don't because when I scan it in and save it the biggest size it's like 16,000 pixels wide so I'll save another smaller size of each image also it's like 2,000 pixels wide right it's just a lot it's like a little I just need to sit down commit to it for a while, I can get through a bunch of images and to have a scanning day. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but anyways, yeah, I need, I wanna, it's, it's nice to make some money from the art um, because I'm, I'm saving up for something called a GeForce RTX 3090. Hands in the air, who knows what that is? If you know what that is, you know that it also might be kind of a foolish errand on my part to even think about buying one of those because I think usually they're, I don't know how much they're usually like $1,700, but right now they're, the prices have like doubled because of weird, inconceivable, overly convoluted problems like supply chain problems, chip manufacturing problems, um, cryptocurrency mining people that need the GPUs for mining cryptocurrency. And um, anyways, it's pretty much impossible to get a, a graphics card like that right now. But when I built this computer that I'm sitting in front of right now, when I built it like three years ago, I didn't put a very good graphics card in it. Like that's where I saved money because I built it for doing things like video editing and when you like render and edit a video, it's mostly, as far as I can tell, a CPU intensive process. Uh, but now I'm also getting in, into doing other things like, like 3D rendering and um, doing things on like Rhino and I'm learning AutoCAD and uh, Revit and stuff at school, which is more GPU intensive. And plus I still enjoy playing video games sometimes and I'm getting to that point you know where I can only play things on like medium medium settings sometimes low settings so I don't know I just kind of want a new video card but they're the prices are incredibly high right now because the only people selling them are scalpers they only make like three video cards per day at each factory it's incredibly um hard to get one I don't even know how to get one the only place the only way I know of to really get one if without buying from a scalper is to buy a pre-assembled PC from one of those websites one of those companies that sells pre-assembled PCs but I don't know if they are upcharging also because I feel like they have already they have a stock of these video cards for their pre-assembled PCs or even if they're not pretty simple, you can buy custom built ones, right? And I know, I know it's not a, a good deal to buy those custom built PCs, but also I, someone tell me this, how hard is it to buy a custom built PC and then take my hard drive that I have with my operating system on it out of this computer, pop it into that one, and then I don't have to reinstall all my programs. How hard is that? Would that work? Or would that not work? I can't figure out if that would work or not. Anyways, um, I'm just kind of window shopping for computers right now. All those custom built ones are way too expensive. Like they, you know, they charge a lot and then they first for like half the half the parts they use like the cheapest parts possible so 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 that they can make some money off of it, which is, you know, I don't know. Anyways, um what, what else was I gonna talk about? Oh, I guess it's not weird, but I have this mild problem with ants right now. It's not a big problem. I just see ants every now and then 
in the kitchen sometimes. They're around the sink, which I guess is a fairly normal place for ants to be. And here in my my office space, sometimes they are on the ceiling over me, and then they drop down onto me, like special assault team style. And I feel them crawling on my arms, and I find one, like, I find one or two every on me like every two or three days. And the worst part about that is I want to kill them because my exterminator guy says they're like scout ants and you don't want them going back to the, the the queen mother, right? But I have to get like a paper towel to kill it because if you kill it with, but just you squish it between your fingers, what is it with ants? They let out the weirdest kind of, kind of sour, noxious, almost m- metallic smell when you kill them and it stays on your fingers. I mean, I wash my fingers afterwards, but still it's like odd. And sometimes my, every now and then I call my exterminator and he comes over and solves my ant problem for a couple of months. Uh, but he just kind of s- stands there at my sink, moves all the stuff away from the sink and he gets this really powerful flashlight and we just stand there kind of talking shop, usually about flashlights. And he just kind of very patiently watches each ant and sees where it's going, tries to figure out where its home is. I figured, I kind of always assume exterminators just kind of show up, find the ants, you know, like put down some bait, spray something, leave, just kind of a, just run in and, you know, spray and pray sort of deal. But he was very methodical about just, he stood there for like 15 minutes and he's like, I cannot figure out where these ants are going, where they're coming from. They've caught me fooled. So he just ended up putting some bait down. But he didn't like it. He didn't like that he couldn't figure out. Like, because uh, the first time he came, he figured out that they were coming from the hole behind some electrical socket or something. But the second time, they fooled him. They got him. They must have learned. Don't, don't, don't lead, lead a trail right back to our home, guys. Because last time, they found us out. Anyways, I'm going to go now. So see you later. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.